Welcome to another episode of our brand new series, Mini Hack Solved. And in this episode, we are going to solve the hack, build a Zencode's unified CLI plugin. But first, what are mini hacks? Mini hacks is one of the most popular hands-on areas at Dreamforce and Trailblazer DX. Once attendees come into this area, they can pick a hack based on their expertise or skill level. And this hack contains a small business problem and a set of requirements on how to solve this problem. And these requirements are not as detailed as they are on Trailhead. They just tell you what has to be done, but not how it has to be done. Let's now look at the requirements of this hack. So the business wants you to build a plugin that generates a random Zen code whenever you run a command from the plugin. And in the detailed requirements, the first one says this challenge requires you to build a plugin for the next generation Salesforce CLI, also known as unified Salesforce CLI. It uses the SF command. So what is the unified Salesforce CLI? A year ago, we announced Salesforce CLI unification as an effort to streamline and simplify how you build apps across Salesforce and all of its products. For this, we created a new global CLI executable called SF. Once you install the Salesforce CLI, you get both the SFDX executable and the new SF executable. What this means is that you can keep using all of the old SFDX commands that you love, along with the new SF commands that have been created specifically for cross-cloud app development and deployment. For example, let's take the SF project deploy command. If you run this command, it deploys the entire project in your local directory to their respective environments. For example, if your project contains the force app folder, it deploys all of that code to the Salesforce platform. If your project includes the functions folder, it deploys all the functions to your functions compute environment. Similarly, in future, if your project is going to contain Heroku app code, it's going to deploy that code to the Heroku environment and so on. So that's what is our vision with the new SF command. The best part is you can use SF and SFDX side by side. Imagine you have created a scratch org using the SFDX command. You'll be able to deploy to that scratch org using the SF commands as well. The authentication information is shared between both the executables. You can read this blog post to know more about the CLI unification. The link is in the description of this video. Now with that in mind, let's go back to our requirements. So we'll have to create a new command Zen generate. So in order to run this, you'll have to use SF Zen generate. Once this command is invoked, you need to make a call out to the Zen slash API slash random endpoint and get a random Zen code. And in the hints, they mention some packages that you can use to make callouts from Node.js. And this random Zen code that we've gotten from the endpoint must be displayed in the command line when a command is run. When the command is run with the JSON flag, the code must be displayed in a JSON format where the JSON has two properties. One is quote, the other one is author. And when the command is run with the help flag, we need to display relevant examples. And creating a plugin for the unified CLI is a little bit different from your standard SFDX plugins. So there is a new developer guide for creating SF plugins. And you can access this developer guide from the wiki tab on the Salesforce CLI slash CLI repo, which is public. So in here, in the get started section, you have detailed instructions on how you can set up your developer environment and how do you create your first plugin? How do you integrate with third party services? So all of it is pretty much documented. So all we need to do is follow these instructions and solve the mini hack. So let's get started. Okay, first and foremost, you need to ensure you're running on the latest Salesforce CLI version. So let me quickly run the update command. And once updated successfully, let me quickly run the sfdx-v 
comment to see if I'm on the latest version, which I am. So next, I need to install this Salesforce plugin dev, which contains the commands for generating plugins and more. So let me do this. Okay, just an important note, this command doesn't create the plugin itself, but it creates the tools and commands you need to create the plugin. So now that this plugin is installed, let's start creating our plugin. So first, let me navigate to the folder in which I put all of my code. And now, let me run this SF dev generate plugin command. So as you can see, this uses the new SF executable to generate the plugin as well. So I am not planning to build a plugin for the internal Salesforce team. So N, the name of the plugin is Zen Quotes. A description, let me enter something. The author, I don't want to enforce any code coverage for now. And once I do that, it creates a project for me and installs all the dependencies. All right, so once that is done, I can go into the folder and open it up in VS Code. So by default, this project is going to contain a hello world command. So to run that command, I'm going to have to copy the syntax, which is bin slash dev hello world. So ideally during development, you'll be using bin slash dev after your development is complete. You can link this plugin to the global ex SF executable, at which point you can directly run SF hello world. And as you can see, it prints a message hello world at so and so date. Now let me quickly give you a walkthrough of the folder structure on how this command works. So first and foremost, all of your commands are going to be present in the SRC folder. So if you expand SRC, there is a commands folder inside which you have a hello folder and then world.ts. So hello here is a namespace, which is the first part of your command. And then world, which is your actual command is going to be a TypeScript file. First, we import the SF command class from the SF plugin score library. And then you define your custom command by extending the SF command class. Inside this class, you have the run method, which contains the actual code of your command. So whenever you run your command, this is the code that runs. So as you see here, we are printing the hello world message using this dot log. And whenever this command is run using the JSON flag, we are going to return this JSON structure. Another important thing that you will notice in this file is messages. So we have used messages in multiple places. For example, whether it is summary of the command, whether it is examples for the command, or even messages that you want to show inside the run method. All these messages are stored inside the messages folder and each command is going to have its own markdown file. For example, the hello world command has hello.world.md, inside which you have multiple messages. Each message is going to have a heading and the actual message. Now to retrieve messages from this folder, you're going to have to write messages.load and pass in the name of the markdown file and an array of all the headings that you want to retrieve. So once you do this, you can just say messages.getMessage and pass in the heading of the message as a parameter and the value of the message is going to be put inside this variable. So think of it like custom labels in Salesforce where all of the labels are stored in one particular file and then you can retrieve them as needed. Now to create a new command, you need to run this command sfdevgenerate command and pass in the name of the command. So let's do that. And as per our requirements, the name of the command must be Zen generate. So let's do that. So let's create Zen and generate. 
What this does is it creates the necessary folders, files in both the commands and the messages folder. So if you now notice, if you expand the commands folder, along with hello, you can see a Zen folder inside which there is a generate TypeScript file, which looks pretty much similar to what you have just seen for the hello world. Along with this, you'll also notice a new markdown file for messages has been generated. Now we need to make a call out to this endpoint Zen code slash API slash random for which we need to install one of these dependency packages. Now, as per the documentation, they're already showing me how I can install the GOT at 11.8.5 package, which is what is one of the recommended ones here. So I'm just going to install this for now. All right, once it's installed, let me go into my generate TypeScript file and import this GOT library. So I say import GOT from GOT, which is what is listed in the documentation as well. After I import the GOT library, I need to use this library to make a get request to this endpoint. So let me click on this endpoint to see the result. And I can see that a JSON structure is being returned by this endpoint. Back in my documentation, I scroll a little bit to the bottom and look at how I can run a get request using GOT and I find the syntax for it. So let me go ahead and paste that into my run method. And first and foremost, I need to update the endpoint and then let me log the result. Now, notice the code shows a lot of errors. This is because this code is written using TypeScript and TypeScript expects you to define concrete types for each variable. Now, in this case, we are making a call out to an external endpoint and the external endpoint is returning a JSON structure. Now, what TypeScript expects you to do is create a type that corresponds to that particular JSON structure. Now let's do that. So here you can see that it is an array of objects and each object has three properties. One is Q for quote, one is A for author and one is H for the HTML version of this quote. So let us create the types accordingly. So first let me create a type for quote which is of type object. So I'll initialize it using curly braces. And it has three properties. One is Q of type string, A of type string, and H of type string. And then I'll export another type called quote result, which is going to be an array of quote. Now I'm going to assign this type to my external service callout and you can see the error has gone away, one of the errors. Since we are not using any flags for this particular uh, command, let's remove the entire thing. But there is one more error with the result property where if I hover over it, I can see that the result is of type quote response, but this dot log needs a variable of type string. So how do I convert a JSON structure to a string? I just need to do json.stringify of result. And now all the errors are gone. Now to run this command, I type in bin slash dev zen generate, where zen is the namespace and generate is the actual command. And you can see this command prints the exact same JSON that is returned from the endpoint. But as per the requirement, we should not be printing the entire JSON, but rather just the code. So let's remove result and get the exact code from the result, which is result of zero, which is the first element of the array, dot Q, which is the actual code. And let me run this command again. And you can see the code is printed in the command line.
Now the next requirement says whenever you run the command with the JSON flag, it must show quote and author as the properties. So here the code that has been predefined has only path as one of its properties that is returned as a JSON. So we need to replace it with quote and author where quote is going to be result of 0.q as we have defined here and author is going to be result of 0.a which is the author. Once you do this you still see an error and once you hover over it you can see that it is a type error which says Zen generate result is not of the type quote and author. So if you scroll a little bit to the top you can see that the Zen generate result only has path as one of its attributes. Instead of it we need to update the type to say quote of string and author of type string as well. And now all the errors are gone. So let me run this command with the JSON flag. And you can see the result now contains quote and author just as expected. Now the final requirement is when the command is run with the help flag display relevant examples. So first and foremost let us run this command using the help flag now and see what is being returned. It shows summary of a command and description of a command as hard coded text. And like we've discussed previously, the summary and description are going to be coming in from the markdown file. So let me update the summary to say displays Zen codes. And for the command, it says displays a random Zen code. And that's it. Once I run the help command again, it shows me the updated summary and the updated description. And that's how you create a plugin for the unified CLI. The process itself is simple, but I think the TypeScript part is a little bit tricky because you need to figure out what is the type of data and need to create the appropriate types. So if you are unfamiliar with TypeScript, I would recommend you check out my blog post on TypeScript for Salesforce developers. And the links are given in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever a new episode of our brand new series Mini Hacks Solved comes out.